Hey guys and welcome back to the show. So back in September, Google released an Easter egg for their Google Chrome game whereby the user could interact with some sort of birthday cake. This was to symbolize the 10th anniversary of Google Chrome and all the wonderful magic that it brought with it. So when interacting with this birthday cake, the clouds become balloons, the dinosaur sprites get this little party hat and there are all sorts of unique sounds. Now we haven't done sounds just yet that will be coming in a future video, but let's go about exploring what it'll take to bring these unique sprites into our game to create this Easter egg experience. So first things first, let's run through the sprites. So as you've seen the Dino Run, we also now have the Dino Run B-Day. And if I run this at five speed, you can see as he claps his little feet, it also has this party hat that sways back and forth. The Dino Duck is now accompanied by the Dino Duck B-Day again at five, swerves so backwards and forwards. There is also a Dino Dead B-Day over here, which has the hat. There are no sub-images for this sprite. And I believe there's also the balloon, which will replace the cloud. Now, first things first, I actually want to go ahead and create another layer here for the ground, um, because you might not notice this, but this dinosaur is actually on the same layer as the ground over here. So there, the ground is at a lower level than the dinosaur also they're the same color so you don't see them but when the cake comes into existence it's going to be put right at the bottom of the order of instances on this instances layer so it'll actually show behind uh, the ground which will look kind of weird so let's go ahead and add a new layer here let's see which one is this new instances layer let's rename this one to ground just like that uh, let's put ground behind the instances so anything we create the dinosaur the um, birthday cakes, the obstacles, the clouds, it'll all be in front of the ground. So then I'm going to go ahead and take all these ground guys like that. I'm going to copy them. I'm going to go to the ground layer. I'm going to paste. I'm going to go into here and then just delete them like that. Okay, cool. So ground is now behind our story over there. Another thing while we're here, let's go to the creation code and let's introduce another global variable. Global.bday is false. It's not a birthday on start. And we can close that. Next, let's go ahead and actually create our birthday cake. Create object. Oh, I didn't actually show you the birthday cake, did I? There it is. Pretty straightforward. Um, so where's our new object? There it is. OBJ cake. Let's give it the correct sprite. There it is. And I'm going to make the parent an obstacle. So it gets all the speed properties. So we want it to move at the same speed. But I also want to say that if there are any in the room that exists at the same time as Global B-Day, they're going to destroy themselves. So notice that here's an inherited step. As you can see, it says uh, parent children. If I create a new step here, we must remember to just say event inherited. And then we want to say if global.bday destroy itself, just like that. Because we don't want two of these at the same time. Next, let's go to the controller. Now this handles the creation of all our objects. In the create event, I'm going to add an alarm here. Start creating cakes. Alarm two, because room speed. I'm going to say 20 seconds. So in the 20th second, it's going to be creating the first cake. And then in the alarm to event, uh, let's go over here. Let's do instance uh, create layer. This is going to be at room width uh, plus 100. Whoops. Room height minus 75. This is going to be on the instances layer. And it's going to be object cake. Then next, I want to actually say that this fires off again in the next 20 seconds. So we can grab this, paste it in here. But above that, I want to say, well, if it's global B day, then exit this event. Don't tell the system to execute it again in 20 seconds. Uh, also, let's do global game over. That's also another good one. Either of those. Next, let's go into the dinosaur, into the collision with an obstacle. Okay, now we're going to refactor this a little bit. We're going to say, well, what is the type of the 
um, the object that we're colliding with. Well, so we're going to say other, which is the object opposite to Dinah that we're colliding with. So in this case, it'll be the instance of the obstacle. Object index, if it's not equal to a cake, do one thing, otherwise do another. If it is a cake, then it hits the else, so global.bday is equal to true. We're going to say that um, destroy the other one. Now, technically, because we send global bday to true, the cake will destroy itself because of the step event. With other instance, destroy. And then I can go about and take all this code that we had before and put that in the if over there. Oh, let's fix this indentation. And here we've got sprite index equals sprite dino dead. So it's basically saying if we have contact with the cactus or pterodactyl, it's the end of the game. But because we have multiple types of the dead sprite, um, as we saw earlier, we need to make sure that if it's the birthday mode, it shows the birthday dead sprite. So here I'm going to say if global dot b day else going to do normal dead and that's dead b day very cool now if we're going to step over here let's check it says script set sprite so that seems to be interesting we need to go into here to update the sprite depending on what the mode is so let's head over to scripts set sprite let's see what this does if jumping or falling then a stand um, if ducking, it's dino duck. If he's not jumping, falling, or ducking, then it's dino run. Now here we need to incorporate whether it's the BDA mode or not. So I'm going to say inside here, let's wrap these in parentheses. And I'm going to say if global.bday again, else we do what it did before. Okay, there we go. Sprite index over here is going to be dino stand. Do we have a BDA dino stand? I don't actually think we do. I think we just have to do it for the duck and the run. Because we can never be dino stand and birthday because that's the only, the sprite only gets shown right in the beginning. It's probably not even actually needed. So I'm actually just going to grab the if else kind of style here. Let's paste these down below. Let's undo. All of that, and parentheses makes it cleaner and easier to understand. So we can leave that there. Let's go over here. If it's birthday mode, then it's going to be Dino Duck B Day. And here it's going to be Run. Run B Day. And image speed of 2 is the same. That's a standard. I think that's it over there. And um, talking about alarms earlier, we actually need to also do the alarm that changes the clouds into balloons. So let's go into controller. I'm not sure which one it was. Uh, oh, it was alarm one. Okay, alarm one. Instance create layer object cloud. So let's say var i equals that. And then I might still have this in my clipboard. Nope, I don't. If global dot b day then i dot sprite index equals spr balloon and that balloon is quite difficult to see but uh, much like the cloud it's just a gray outline of a balloon very good and uh, if it's not global b day the cloud will be created with well it's cloud sprite so i don't have to actually have the else here Every single one more equals over here. And let's actually go back to, what was it, the sp set sprite. Let's just double check we got everything because that was probably the longest piece of code. Um, oh, we've got an extra one of these. Global B day, run B day. Um, what about the jump? Let's see, jumping or falling is dino stand. I actually do need a dino stand, don't I? Dino stand B day. Let's see. Import. I do have dino stand B day. Ugh, I must have just forgotten about him. Okay, so let's go center. And let's see. Where was it? That was, was at 47. 
And let's see, this needs to be Dino SPR, Dino Stand B Day. And let's see, this was, I think it was plus 20. Oopsie, 70. Let's just compare these. Okay, I think it's one pixel above the armpit. So let's scroll in. 44, oh, one pixel below. There we go, 44 and 71. Perfect. Okay, awesome. Let's go back to set sprite. And let's get this kind of flow back. And let's grab this guy, paste him in here, paste this guy in there. Change that to B day. Awesome. Okay, let's fire this up and see what happens. All right, so here we go. Dinosaur, normal, nothing has changed. We have a cactus as normal. Clouds will start to form uh, right about now, I think. There's one, there's a cloud. Okay, cool. So far, nothing has exploded. Let's keep running, jumping over pterodactyls. Um, choosing not to duck over the low ones. There's a cake. Let's get it. Oh, we've got the cake. Oh, okay. So everything's still moving. That's not right. Let's go back. Let us close. Let's go down to, let's see, dino. Let's see what's got obstacle. object. Okay, cool. Right. So it's saying if we collide in something that isn't the cake, which is fine. Here we got object obstacle. I don't see anything that says this needs to go to a zero speed so let's put that in maybe that was missing somehow removed during our refactoring but that's okay uh, let's go to obstacle obstacle yeah it doesn't have anything to to cause it to stop but that's fine let's try this again okay one more time fingers crossed right we can jump over cacti that's normal small ones still small ones uh, we're not going to duck under that bird another small one a low bird, a can, fine, pterodactyl. Where are the big cacti? This is just chance, I suppose. There's a big one. Uh, oh, I'm going to skip that cake. It was in a cactus. So what should happen is the next 20 seconds, we should see another birthday cake appear. Uh, that's one we can actually go for. And then everything should become magical and Easter eggy. Any second now. There it is. Okay, we've got that. We can jump. We can duck. Everything's looking good. Oh, there's our first balloon getting spawned instead of the cloud. That's very cool stuff. So when we cover sounds, which will probably be the next video, we'll now um, be able to use the basic sounds that the game has as well as the birthday sounds. So if you found this tutorial educational, helpful, please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe for more of the very best game make tutorials. If you have any suggestions and advice on what we can do to improve upon Google's game or just spice it up for our own awesome needs. Please let me know with your suggestions. If you like this video and want to support the channel, please check out my Patreon campaign. I really do appreciate your support. The project files are also straight in the description. Download them, play with them, explore with them. See if you can create some awesome things. Let me know if you do. Oh, and there I died. That's 5,000 points. So next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.